Hello, my name is Nick van Helbutte. I'm from iMac and today I will be talking a little bit about adaptive sampling. In a lot of Internet of Things applications, uh, you have a huge amount of sensor nodes which sense the whole world around us. Now many of these sensor nodes typically have an extremely stringent power budget while they generate large data streams that must aggregate to the cloud. And if you do a power breakdown of these sensor nodes, you will find that quite often the power of the radio is the dominating part. So there's a lot of research going on to figuring out what the most energy efficient way is to get the right data to the cloud. Now, if we look a little bit at a typical signal flow in those sensor nodes, you can usually break it down to something as shown in this slide here. I will use an example based on an ECG sensor um, for wearable healthcare application, but the concepts are generally applicable to any kind of sensing applications. It usually starts with uh, a re signal acquisition, uh, where you just get the raw data in, followed by some kind of artifact or noise reduction. In this case here, it would be removing the baseline drift. And then a lot of signals in sensor networks are fairly sparse and you can actually segment the data into the regions of interest where something interesting is happening. In this case it would be finding out the regions where the heartbeat is actually pre visible. You can take it one step further um, and actually extract known features. For the case of an ECG you could extract the particular QRS complexes as shown here. Um, which indicate the heartbeat. For other applications, like uh, maybe uh, an accelerometer in a step counter, uh, this feature extraction could be extracting the step. Finally, if you have the signal broken down into specific features, you can do classification, try to understand whether this is a normal heartbeat or an abnormal heartbeat. It's clear that going down the signal flow, the rate, data rate drastically reduces but at the same time, the digital signal processing increases. So the question now is, at which point do we transmit? If as we go down in the signal flow, we have to transmit less data, so we can save on power in the radio, but we'll need to do more computing on the node, which will increase power again. So there's a difficult trade-off to trying to figure out how much local versus cloud signal processing that you do. And there's many things people can do to reduce the data rate that you need to transmit to the cloud. Things like lossless data compression uh, techniques, local feature extraction, or sub Nyquist sampling are just a few uh, things, techniques that people can use. And today I'll be focusing primarily on a specific form of sub Nyquist sampling, which is called adaptive sampling. You're probably all familiar with the Shannon-Nyquist uniform sampling theory, which says that any band-limited signal with a specific bandwidth of B can be perfectly reconstructed if it's sampled at a frequency at least twice um, the bandwidth of the signal. That theorem assumes a time-invariant input signal, and you can actually expand it to a non-uniform sampling theory. And the main idea here is that if you have an input signal that drastically changes the bandwidth over time, as shown in the drawing here, you, you can immediately see that it's not efficient to sample this signal with the highest sampling frequency required by the uniform sampling theory. So what you would do in non-uniform sampling is try to break down the signal in uh, smaller time windows and analyze the bandwidth during that time window and sample the signal during the time window at the lowest possible frequency. So in this particular example, during the first time window, I would, the bandwidth is low and you can actually sample the signal fairly low. But as soon as the bandwidth goes up in the second time window here, we will change the sampling frequency so we can properly uh, sample the second part of the signal. So in adaptive sampling, what you're going to do is you're going to change the sample frequency to satisfy the instantaneous bandwidth. 
That's what it would look like in our example of an ECG signal, where you can see that the regions where the signal is changing very quickly, they are sampled very fast, whereas the regions in between where the signal is fairly sparse, they are sampled much slower. And you can immediately see that the amount of data that is being generated is much lower than if you would just simply sample the signal at the high speed. So there's many, many ways you can implement that. And today I'm only going to focus on a very simplistic way to implement adaptive sampling. It's in this example, it's done completely in the digital domain. So your analog front end is a typical one, as is your ADC, which is just running Nyquist um, conversion rates. But then in the digital domain, you're going to resample the data and store an adaptively sampled data in the memory or transmit the adaptively sampled data uh, through the radio. So how does it work? Again, I will explain it based on our example of an ECG signal. On the top, you see the raw Nyquist sampled signal. Well, the first step you will do is calculate the median deviation, which is defined like this. And it's basically kind of a difference function with some kind of memory. And the median deviation represents how fast the signal changes. So in other words, if the median deviation is high, the signal is changing quickly, which means that the bandwidth of the signal is high. And that information you can then use to determine the sample frequency of the signal. So after calculating the median deviation, you compare it with a number of thresholds. In this case, it's three thresholds. And you actually resample the data three times as well. And based on if the median deviation is higher than a certain threshold, you will either apply no resampling, or if it's lower than the lowest threshold, you will resample the data um, a lot. The calculation of the thresholds is shown here. In this particular case, it's um, a combination of the average of the median deviations around the, the point where you're looking with a certain scaling factor. And how you calculate these thresholds, how many uh, averages you take and those scaling factors depend a lot on the statistics of the signal you're looking at. So there's no magic number here that will satisfy all signals. You need to play a little bit with this depending on the signal characteristics that you're trying to adaptively sample. But in essence, it's a reasonably simple thing to do with a fairly low overhead in power and area um, in a digital domain. Of course, if we're talking about adaptively sampling, we need to talk also about reconstruction. But reconstruction is actually also quite simple um, and can usually be done just by linear interpolation. After transmitting out the adaptively sampled data, you need to append some information to the data relating, uh, related to the instantaneous sampling frequency. But once you have that information, simple linear interpolation can be used to reconstruct the original data. It's important to realize that in some cases, you actually don't need to reconstruct the original data. And in a lot of cases, you can do signal processing directly on the adaptively sampled data. One particular function that occurs quite often in sensor networks and these type of applications is a convolution, where you convol con do the convolution of the sensed signal with a certain wavelet template waveform in order to be extract certain features. Um, now, if you apply the concept of adaptive sampling to your template waveform, you can actually run the convolution directly on the adaptively sampled data. And there's no need to do reconstruction. You gain twice. You save the reconstruction logic. But at the same time, your convolution or feature extraction alg algorithm can run with less cycles and less memory access. So what can you get out of this? It's quite difficult to generalize this because the benefits of adaptive sampling depend a lot on the statistics of the signal you're actually sampling. But if we take, again, the example we've been using throughout this small tutorial, 
we have been able to achieve a data, uh, 9x power reduction in on-the-node signal processing, and that's just because there were less cycles and less memory access required. And we've, more importantly, been able to get a 6x power reduction in the radio, simply because the data rate, the raw data rate up, uh, was six times lower. Obviously, these numbers, again, depend a lot on the statistics of the signal that you're um, working with. But most sensor data signals are reasonably sparse, and the sampling provides a huge benefit on those type of signals. So, in conclusion, the leaf nodes of Internet of Things applications usually suffer from a data bottleneck. Local signal processing on the sensor nodes can reduce the raw output data rate and reduce the overall system power. And adaptive sampling is just one of many techniques, but it's a technique that can reduce the raw data rate as well as the radio power, it can reduce the operating cycles and memory access of DSP in some cases. In theory, this is a perfectly lossless technique, so it can maintain good performance and signal quality, but obviously it works best on sparse data. And that concludes our tutorial.